A woman slept with her python every day, and her neighbors thought that her relationship with the snake was very strange. But when the doctor saw something on the ultrasound and was terrified, she found out what her snake was secretly doing. The examination room was cold, lit only by the bluish light of the ultrasound monitor. Carmen sat in her chair, motionless, her breathing slightly accelerated, while her gaze was fixed on the dark screen, where indistinct shapes flickered and disappeared. The doctor, Raymond, an experienced man with eyes that had seen so much in his career, maintained a serious expression, his eyes fixed on the screen while his hand moved the transducer with precision. The man was stunned. He couldn't believe his eyes. Carmen, look at this on the screen. Do you think that's normal? His voice broke the silence with a seriousness that made the woman's stomach turn. She couldn't find the words. She just shook her head, unable to look away from the confusing image on the screen. The doctor sighed, a heavy sound that seemed to carry the weight of the world. Who sleeps with a snake, Carmen? He asked, but he didn't expect an answer. He knew her answer, and he knew science. He knew that the real question was not who, but why, because the situation was too absurd to try to explain. Carmen felt attacked and tried to defend herself. Luke is more than a snake to me, she said, her voice trembling slightly. He's my only companion. Why does everyone think that's so bad? Some people have dogs or cats, and I have a snake. The doctor looked at her, his piercing eyes conveying a message she didn't want to receive. Not a snake, dear. They're unpredictable. They act on instinct, not affection. You're attributing human emotions to a reptile, and look what it's doing to you is absurd. But she refused to accept it. Luke knew her, felt her warmth, chose her every night to cuddle with. The man continued, his voice taking on a tone of urgency. You must stop immediately. You cannot sleep with that snake anymore. The doctor's final words echoed in the room, and Carmen felt as if the ground had been taken out from under her feet. She found herself in the difficult reality where she had to choose between science and her heart. The idea of rejecting Luke, of banishing him from her room, from her bed, filled her with an anguish she couldn't express. On the journey home, the woman was lost in thought. The idea of a night without the snake wrapped around her body was unthinkable. He was her constant comfort on lonely nights, the presence that calmed her when the night shadows became too scary. She looked at Luke, settled in the transport box next to her, completely oblivious to the emotional storm brewing inside her. How can I abandon what we have? She thought, her heart clenching at the prospect of losing her faithful companion. You know what? I'm not abandoning you, Luke. She was determined. But what did the doctor see in the ultrasound? Was her bond with the reptile an illusion of her own making? What was really going on? First, we need to explain that Carmen, a 33-year-old woman of peculiar tastes, had found in Luke an irreplaceable companion, and her life had become intertwined with his in ways that many would consider unusual, even unacceptable. The woman adopted him when, on a hike, she found the snake injured. He was still a baby snake, so she took him home. The animal grew up by her side, transforming from a tiny snake that slithered curiously between her fingers into a majestic reptile that now occupied a prominent place in her heart and in her bed. Their relationship had begun as a peculiar friendship between a lonely woman and an exotic animal. But over the years, the intimacy between the two grew. Carmen began to allow Luke to sleep wrapped around her, a practice she believed to be the ultimate expression of mutual trust. For her, who was very lonely, the animal wasn't just a snake. It was a loyal friend, someone who listened to her innermost thoughts without ever interrupting or judging. On cold nights, it was the snake who brought warmth, and on lonely days, it was his presence that offered comfort. The absence of a human partner or children which she would never have because she was too demanding when it came to having a boyfriend, was less felt with Luke around, filling a void that Carmen didn't always know existed. But those who didn't think well about her behavior were her neighbors, who were always so quick to comment and gossip, and who observed her life with a mixture of horror and bewilderment. Have you seen Carmen today? One neighbor asked another as they looked out the window. Her snake is getting bigger. It can be natural. Another neighbor, watching her go by, couldn't help but mutter, She's walking around with that big snake around her neck. What if it escapes and attacks us? 
That woman is crazy. However, Carmen didn't care. She knew that the connection she shared with Luke was something they would never understand. As she walked through the streets, with her pet wrapped comfortably around her shoulders, she felt the stares, but in her heart, a feeling of peace reassured her. They don't know anything about us, she thought, gently stroking the snake's scaly skin. They don't see what I see in you. At night, when the world fell asleep and they were alone, the woman would share her dreams and fears with the animal, who seemed to listen to every word with an attentiveness that she would never receive from another human being. Carmen talked about her days, her hopes, and the little joys she found in her routine. And Luke, with his observant eyes, seemed to understand every emotion that ran through her soul. Their connection ran deep, transcending the species barrier, a true friendship that, in its essence, defied logic. In her moments of reflection, she knew that something special had been forged between them, something that went beyond the simple domestication of a wild animal. It was a true partnership, something rare and precious that she wasn't ready to give up. However, something started to happen. A change in Luke's behavior began to worry her. The snake, who used to delight in the meat and snacks she offered, now refused any food. He loved pieces of chicken, beef, and even the mice that appeared in the house were a feast for the reptile. Carmen watched in confusion as Luke ignored the delicacies that he used to devour with veracity. What's happening, Luke? Don't you want your food today? She asked, trying to disguise the concern in her voice as she pushed a piece of chicken towards the animal with a fork. The days passed, and Luke's refusal to eat became constant. Carmen noticed that not only had he stopped eating, but he had also become apathetic. Once active during the day, exploring nooks and crannies of the house, Luke now seemed reluctant to leave his bed, the place where he spent most of his time curled up around Carmen, who worked from home. In that space, she typed on her laptop, involved in calls and projects, while Luke remained motionless, like a warm, comforting weight against her skin. Are you just lazy today? She joked, trying to relieve the tension that was beginning to grow inside her. However, when she went away, even for a moment to get a cup of coffee or stretch her legs, when she returned, she found Luke in exactly the same place, as if he had been waiting for her. The change in the python's feeding behavior went on for days, and Carmen, although she tried to remain calm, could no longer ignore the alarming signs. She crouched down beside him, her hand stroking the snake's scaly skin as she carefully inspected its elongated body. You have to eat something, Luke. You can't just stop eating like this. She murmured, worried, as she offered different types of food, waiting in vain for a response. Only, a few days later, it was then that the woman noticed something else alarming. Luke's belly was growing, swelling abnormally. Carmen felt a lump forming in her throat as she touched the distended area, her mind racing with possible explanations. What's wrong with you, darling? She asked. Why don't you eat? Happening? But the animal, with its impassive eyes, offered no answers. She knew something was wrong, and the sight of Luke's swollen belly only confirmed her fears. It was a sign that something more serious was going on, something she couldn't solve alone. Worried about her friend's health, the woman decided to see a specialist. She knew a veterinarian called Raymond Brown from television, renowned for his work with reptiles, and she knew he would be the best choice to assess her snake's situation. With her heart squeezed by anxiety and Luke's belly visibly swollen, she took him to an appointment. At the vet's, the walls were adorned with certificates and photos of healthy and recovered reptiles. The woman held the animal, stroking him gently as she murmured words of comfort. Don't worry, the doctor will take good care of you. We'll find out why you don't want your food, okay? During the consultation, the veterinarian examined Luke carefully before suggesting an ultrasound. The concern in his eyes was evident, and this only added to Carmen's nervousness. When the images began to appear on the ultrasound screen, the doctor's face turned pale as if he had seen a ghost. The woman leaned forward, trying to see what was causing this reaction. What do you see here, Carmen? He asked with a gravity that made her heart stop. I, well, I don't see anything. She replied with confusion and fear in her voice. It doesn't look like anything, I guess. Exactly. There's nothing here. His stomach was empty. You have to stop sleeping with this snake immediately. 
said the vet, his serious and terrified gaze fixed on the woman. She felt the ground open up under her feet. Why, what does that mean? She asked, disbelief mixed with a sudden wave of fear. My God, woman, who sleeps with a snake? Listen, he's expanding his stomach and he's getting ready to make a bigger meal, Carmen. What do you mean, does he want more meat? She asked, unable to fully grasp the implications of what was being said. Don't you understand? He's expanding his stomach, wrapping himself around you every night. He's getting ready to eat you. You're the meat, he said. Carmen recoiled as if she had been hit. That's absurd. Luke and I have been friends for years. He would never do that. She protested, desperation making her voice tremble. The vet, with an expression of fear, insisted that she no longer sleep with the snake. He's a wild animal, miss. I won't give him two days to make his move. You have to understand, Carmen, the instincts of a creature like this can be unpredictable, especially when it's hungry. The doctor's final words reverberated in the woman's mind as she drove home, with Luke settled in the carrier box. The idea that Luke, her companion of so many years, could see her as prey was more than she could bear. She looked at Luke, searching for some sign in his eyes that would refute what the vet had said. But all she found was the same impassive look as always, a look that now hid a possible mortal threat. But the woman, determined to prove the vet wrong, came up with a plan. She bought a plastic mannequin and positioned it meticulously on her bed, imitating her sleeping posture. As she settled on the sofa, Carmen's mind wandered back to all the moments she had shared with Luke, convinced that the friendship they had built was strong enough to disprove the doctor's deadly predictions. He would never hurt me, she whispered to herself, trying to keep the growing anxiety at bay. We have a special bond, don't we? She said, looking in the direction of her bedroom where the snake and the mannequin were. She remembered all the silent hugs, every quiet night with the reptile curled up next to her, and these memories soothed her heart as she forced herself to close her eyes. But sleep was restless and she tossed and turned on the sofa, her mind never completely disconnected from the missing presence beside her. The house was strangely silent. Every sound in the room seemed amplified, and her heart was beating at an accelerated pace that she couldn't control. Then, in the middle of the night, a strange noise woke her up. It was the sound of something being smashed, the snap of plastic breaking under immense pressure. Carmen jumped up from the sofa, fear driving her through the darkness and into the bedroom. She turned on the light, and the scene before her eyes confirmed her worst fears. Luke was completely wrapped around the mannequin, his massive strength crushing the lifeless object. The sound of his grip was like the sound of bones breaking, and the woman couldn't help but imagine that it could have been her. Tears welled up in her eyes as she realized the truth that was unfolding right under her nose, but the truth was hard to accept. Oh, Luke, what are you doing? She cried, the pain in her voice echoing through the room. She fell to her knees, while the sound of the plastic giving way continued as the snake adjusted its grip, oblivious to its owner's desperation. The animal, despite all her love and care, was still a wild animal, driven by instincts that Carmen had chosen to ignore for so long. She thought about the vet's words, and realized that she had been a fool to think she could tame something as wild as a predator's instinct. So, after a lot of crying, she faced the arduous task of accepting a painful reality. Her beloved snake, Luke, could no longer be her roommate, nor her life partner, as before. With a heavy heart, she made the call she knew was necessary, but which she deeply feared. The animal rescue officers came with professionalism and kindness to take Luke to a new home, a nursery suited to his natural needs and wild instincts. Carmen's house, once filled with Luke's silent presence, now echoed with the sound of loneliness. I'm glad you're safe, she whispered, her fingers touching the cold glass that now separated them. With Luke at the zoo, Carmen's life began to change. The story of how her pet snake almost ate her spread causing a mixture of horror and fascination among acquaintances and strangers alike. People came up to her with questions, sympathy, and even a strange admiration for her courage. This unexpected attention opened doors to something she never thought she would have, new encounters with partners, 
And eventually, it led her to go out with a man who was intrigued by the woman who defied wild instincts for the love of a reptile. Conversations with him were different, full of laughter and new perspectives. With him, Carmen began to envision a different future, one that could include human companionship and perhaps love. She discovered that life, like nature, always finds a way to move on, to adapt and grow in the face of adversity. She learned that love comes in many forms and that sometimes letting go is necessary to find a path to happiness. The visits to the zoo continued, but no longer on a daily basis. She began to embrace new routines, new habits that no longer included Luke, but that honored the journey the two of them had traveled together. And even after so much time had passed, the woman, although she would never forget her friend, opened her heart to the possibility of a new beginning with a human companion and got married. She laughed more, went out more, and when she spoke of Luke, it was with a fondness that came from completely accepting the past and embracing the present. And so the story of Carmen and Luke became a local legend, a tale of love, danger, and growth. A story that began with a pet python snake and ended with a reinvented woman, ready for the new adventures that life still had in store for her. And if you liked this story, I'm sure the next video that pops up on your screen will move you too. Don't forget to subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and activate the notification bell so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. See you in the next heartwarming story.